Hey everybody, this is Daniel with Grim Grin Gaming, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to use the particle effect system within uh, Unity 3D. Um, today I'm going to be showing you uh, how to make a smoke trail or puffs of smoke or whatever you want to do that involves a smoke particle effect. And I'm going to have a few tutorials in a little series, and the end result is going to be something like this smoke trail and then uh, fireworks with some puffs of smoke going on in the background of it um, so anyways let's uh, get started and the first step that we're gonna do is uh, let's let's do this uh, Photoshop we're gonna make the texture this is just my stupid uh, YouTube tutorial thing so let's go make a new uh, image 1024 by 256 so all the other settings are fine you'll either have transparent or white and so let's make a new one um, we're gonna want the background to be black just so we can see everything fine um, then let's go to custom tool let's make it white uh, you got a whole bunch of stuff in here so you can make all sorts of crazy stuff but uh, just going to use the cloud one for smoke and let's set up some guidelines because what we're going to be making here is an animated uh, like a sprite strip pretty much so an animated strip uh, the guides are going to be at 256 which is a quarter of the 1024 so 256 512 and uh, 768 and that'll give us our four slices and then all you gotta do is just make some little clouds and uh, it's pretty cool in Photoshop you can hold down alt and drag to copy alt drag to copy alt drag to copy and there you go they don't all have to be perfectly in the center of these boxes um, but I would say that you do want them to be uh, kind of in the center of this. So let's see if I got that. Got that. Got that. And got that. Um, in the one that I showed, I had them all uh, edited a bit, but it's really a fine detail thing. Uh, all I did was clicked on the edge so that I could open up the transform thing and you can hit warp and you can edit these and make them all uh, skewed and whatever so that you have different looking clouds if anyone's paying enough attention and knows that smoke isn't always the same enter to exit the mode or whatever and so I just like the things to be centered so let's uh, save this to use it in unity so um, I had been saving stuff earlier into my firework folder we're gonna go up one more and that is our asset folder in unity in the project that you're working on so that is going to be located more than likely libraries documents uh, I named mine particle tut and uh, assets so once you get there just name it whatever you like don't save it as a PSD uh, save it as a PNG or JPEG or whatever I think PNG is the best one so save it I don't really mess with that exit that exit that and there it is so now that we have that set up the texture by going to texture type advanced uh, once we get there let's go to clamp and the aniso level clamp it well first clamp is pretty much to avoid any uh, artifacts that might come about um, doubt anything would really show up from this but aniso is uh, to allow better viewing at angles um, it requires more size so depending on the um, size of your game and what you need to do uh, change the aniso level as needed um, I'm also going to change this from 1024 to 256 and I'm going to change automatically compressed to RGB and then I'm going to hit apply and so we went from 170 down to 42.7 kilobytes 
anyone who's worked on a, an entire game and not paid attention to how much size uh, they're incurring uh, will tell you that once you get there it's a big pain in the ass to uh, fix everything so now we have our texture and then we need to make our material so let's name our material uh, smoke puff puffs and then add our texture to it and now we have our texture you see we can see the black so that's all wrong you go to particles you go to additive now you can't see the black and you can see the white cool right um, particles additive this is for the computerized version of your particles or a console if you're doing mobile mobile shaders has their own particles and it would still be additives didn't see a change right it's just a, a little bit less uh, computationally intensive. It won't take up as much space. For this, I'm going to use uh, just regular particles. Um, okay, so now we need to make our particle system. Great. Particle system. Got our particle system flowing over there. And I have some set notes because of the end result. So we're going to set this up for a duration of three. And um, if you turn off looping. It'll last for three seconds. Playback time, three seconds. Trails off because they have a, a lifetime of five seconds. So I'm going to leave looping on so that we can just see it for a little while. And simulate it so that you can see it. The start lifetime we're gonna go hit three start size we're gonna do three start speed we're gonna do point one because that that's how it projects but see right now if you move it it just stays with the uh, object and so simulation space is local so the local space is just where it is it's not simulating in the world so if we go to world it'll trail behind now see it'll trail behind for three seconds these things will live um, what we want to do for the lifetime now is after we enter this constant we want to hit this curve so now we have a start at three and we're gonna have that curve down to this to there but we're actually gonna raise this up so what's gonna happen is we're gonna have a particle that starts its life at three and as it goes it's gonna disappear more quickly um, start size we're gonna actually do a very similar thing start size is gonna be here and it can be in this range I explained the other one a little bit wrong the particles will get a range between here and here um, let's see I'm going to set the gravity to negative 0.15 and see as it's smoke it's going to we want it to float away so that's pretty much all we're going to do right here and let's go to the emission tab actually you know what let's set this up so that you guys can see why we made this um, I don't actually know how you would remove this the only way that I've figured out to do this is to drag this right here and it'll replace it so as you can see right now it's pretty horrible it's just printing out the whole thing but we did make a texture sheet so we have a texture sheet animation it goes along the x-axis um, and we're gonna play between two constants 0 and 4 so there's our smoke right now it doesn't look that good but it will um, the renderer you can take off these, they cost a lot uh, computationally, they're kind of intensive. Point 0.1 for the max particle size. And then let's go to emission. So currently we have it at an emission rate of 10. Um, the more emission, you see now it's just a big solid column because it's emitting 100 little clouds uh, every 3 seconds. So we actually want to go zero. Now it's emitting zero every three seconds, so we got nothing. But if we go to burst, it'll burst the uh, cloud rate. 
but that's not actually what we're going to end up wanting so we're going to go to 150 150 clouds per every three seconds and let's go to shape sphere go to there so we're going to smush that down to 0 0.01 um, let's also drop this down so that our clouds actually start getting a little bit more see-through, transparent and let's hit the size over lifetime size over lifetime we're going to want to start small and go large like normal smoke does so that's going to be the first thing that really starts to uh, make this seem like it might look right, right? So it starts small and it grows because smoke expands. Um, but we still got this constant color over its lifetime. It's um, too solid looking. So let's go to color over lifetime. And in the color over lifetime, just like in Photoshop or other programs, you can set up this gradient. Alpha just means opacity. Um, I'm going to set it up with a, a darkish color here and then a slightly lighter color here to make this go down to there leave that where it is let's, um, let's leave it about there Let's go up to start color, drag this down to about here, and then that gives us pretty decent looking smoke at this point. And then you can drag colors, you can make it whatever color you want, it's pretty cool. It actually looks a ton better in different colors, but for realistic purposes we're going to keep it at uh, gray. And so let's see. Some other things that can make it seem more realistic are rotation. Rotation over lifetime, you can just set it to that. Uh, if you hold down Alt, you'll get this little eyeball. And then if you hit the scroll wheel, you can zoom into things. I don't know if you can see it rotate because we actually diminished it so much. But it's looking pretty much like smoke. It follows the thing. You'll notice that it does take a while to catch up. So you got to be bit careful on how fast you make it go um, that is pretty much it on the smoke so for now I'm gonna leave you with that make sure that you name things correctly call that smoke trail I have one already so I'm gonna name it smoke trail 2 uh, next one I'll show you is gonna be on how to turn that into the smoke puffs which are this particle effect or maybe not there we go oh yeah I have a delay because it's flying through the air so it has to delay before it explodes but in one two three boom boom so that's what I'm going to show you next is how to do that all right, everybody, thanks for watching, and uh, tune in next time. If you haven't seen, we released a Match 3 tutorial series. Uh, one and two are currently out. Um, you can check that out. You do need to know how to, you do need to, know how to program uh, in C Sharp a little bit or C Base language, but uh, it's pretty cool, so check that out, and see you next time. Have a great day.